Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 19 to our Ninja Platformer tutorial series. In this video, we're going to create the bullet for our enemy cannon. This series was brought to you by the students who support me by purchasing my Godot courses. There will be a link in the comment below if you're interested, and in the description if you're interested in those. Let's get started. First, we're going to create a new scene. We can create a 2D scene because our bullet doesn't need to have any sort of physics. We're just going to add a hitbox to the bullet. So we'll name it bullet. We'll zoom in a bit here. Save. And we can just save it wherever. Now we're going to need to get the resources for this. I already have them right here. You may already have them. Uh, or you may need to download them. If you need to download them, there'll be a link down below. I've added this bullet sprite. If you started this tutorial series when I started it or around that time, you're probably going to need to download this bullet sprite because it won't be included in the original assets that I provided because I've made it since then. Drag and drop it over into our file system. And there we can add a sprite. And we can bring in the bullet image, texture, drop it on our sprite. Animation is going to have two frames, two H frames. This is the first one, the second one. First one is just going to be a little muzzle flare, essentially. In fact, let's use an animated sprite. This is a good example of when to use an animated sprite because We don't really need an animation player for this, so we'll just come into animation tab on our animated sprite 2D. We'll create new sprite frames, click on that. Now we get this whole new tab down here where we can uh, create an animation. We've got a default animation right here. That's fine, we can call it default. Uh, it is looping, we don't want that, but we do want it to be automatic will play automatically, but it won't loop. Now we have to add frames to this animation, so we can click this little icon here to do that. We can select our bullet, press OK. It's gonna open up this window here. If we hold Control and scroll, we can zoom in, and this is how Godot is going to attempt to divide up this image into different frames. We're gonna set horizontal to two and vertical to one, because that is what we have. And once we've done that, we actually have to select the frames that we want. So we want this one and this one and press add two frames. Now we can actually play this animation by pressing the play. You can see it just goes from this frame to this frame and then it doesn't loop. That's exactly what we want it to do. So we're already set up and ready to go. Now let's add a script to our bullet. Be called bullet. And our bullet script is going to have two main properties. It's going to have a direction a vector 2 and it's going to have a speed. In this case we can just set the speed as a const and we'll set it equal to 200. We may need to change that value and then inside of our process here we can just say translate. This is a function for moving 2D node 2Ds. Translate and then we need to do our direction times our speed times delta. And we have to multiply by delta right here in order to make this translate function time dependent. Unlike the character body 2D where velocity is already time dependent and not frame dependent, our direction times speed here, which is essentially our velocity, is not already time dependent. It starts off frame dependent. We have to multiply by delta to get it to be time dependent. Okay, and then we want to add a setter to our direction. The reason we want to add a setter to our direction is because we want to actually rotate the sprite so that the sprite is facing the same direction that the bullet is moving in. And so we'll add a little colon here for a setter and type set and type value, and then we'll just say direction equals value. So what's going on here? This just allows us to run some code whenever we update the direction. 
Now, we don't know for sure if the direction variable coming in is normalized. And by normalized, what I mean is that the vector has a length of one. But we want our direction to always have a length of one. If it's got a larger length, then that's going to affect the, uh, the speed that the bullet moves in and it won't make a lot of sense. So as a safety measure, what we can do is we can take this value that is being, this is the value that is being set on direction at each time we set it, and we can type dot normalized. That will just make sure that this is always a length of one. Now we're also going to add a hitbox to our bullet. So we can add a new node and do hitbox, just like this, and we'll add a collision shape and we'll set it to be equal to just a little circle should be fine something like that should be good enough and we're also going to set the collision mask and layer now our bullet is going to be targeting the player's hurt box which is mask 4 put it on mask 4 just like that and there we go now we we did uh, normalize the direction, but we never actually rotated our bullet sprite to match that direction. So what we want to do here is get access to our animated sprite 2D by dragging it over inside of an on ready var. And then inside of our direction setter here, and do this here, we want to say if is valid, is instance valid animated sprite 2d then animated sprite 2d dot rotation equals direction dot angle that will just rotate the sprite to match the direction that our bullet is going on now we have to have this is instance valid right here because it's possible that when the direction is set initially, when we instantiate the bullet, uh, that our sprite isn't ready yet. And in that case, we don't want to update the direction uh, because there's not a sprite to update yet. But we'll be setting the direction manually after instantiating this bullet. And I'll show you how to do that. And by that time, we'll know that the direction is actually ready. Let's come into our enemy cannon here. And inside of here, we'll be able to get access to our bullet in the same way that we have the other particles. We'll say const bullet scene, set this equal to preload bullet.tscn. Make sure you get the, the scene.tscn. And we can create a new function called fire. This. And we'll just fire a bullet. And We'll do that by creating the bullet. So let's say var bullet is equal to bullet scene dot instantiate. Oops, want to pass in anything there. And then we can say at let's see get tree dot current scene. That just gets the root scene of the tree. So in this case, world we've done this before, right? Yeah, we've instantiated stuff before, right up here. Okay. And it's been a few weeks since I've actually recorded for this series. I forgot some of the stuff we've already covered. Add child bullet. And then here we can say bullet dot direction is equal to, and we need to get the direction that the cannon is facing. Now all of our cannons are facing to the left, so we can say vector two dot left for now. Uh, we may end up wanting to make cannons that face to the right later, and in that case, we would have to get the direction the cannon is facing when creating the bullet. Okay, so we have fire here, uh, but there's no way that our, and we're also not actually creating the bullet in any location. We wanna give a location to where the bullet is created from. On our enemy cannon, we'll add a new marker 2D node. I'm going to hold alt and position this right here. And that will be the muzzle location where we fire from. We can just call this muzzle 
and we'll get access to it up here in on ready and then we can say bullet dot global position is equal to muzzle dot global position just like that and it should create it from the correct location now we also want to create these bullets uh, on a timer so we're going to add a timer to our enemy cannon call this timer this timer node and I'd say every five seconds maybe yeah that makes sense kind of counted it out in my head there and it's going to auto start but it's not going to one shot Ooh, ignore time is new I haven't seen this oh it, in it ignores engine time scale I see that makes sense okay so every five seconds this timer is going to emit its timeout signal every five seconds so inside of our enemy cannon we can get access to the timer and then inside of ready we can connect to that timeout signal so timer dot timeout dot connect and then we can put a function an inline function here uh, well we can just call fire actually Let's keep it simple we already have the fire function right here we call it fire bullet just to be a little bit more clear and then save and run the game. Now we may get some errors here because I wrote all this code live. Go and well, no errors, but also oh, there's the bullet. Oh, five seconds was a lot longer than I was expecting. Yeah, that is a lot longer than I was expecting. But it seems to be working. Uh, let's try changing the vector to up just to see what happens. Yep, they correctly fire up, that makes sense, okay. Now one of the problems with our bullet is that it moves even while the, while fr the frame of our animated sprite is on zero during the muzzle flare. So what we wanna actually do is remove that. So if, the, the easiest way to do this is to just exit the process function if we're on frame zero. So if animated sprite dot frame equals 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 zero return so we'll just exit the process function when we're on that first frame come back into our cannons and set this to left again and run the game and that looks better and we get a little muzzle flare now it's too slow but that's easy to fix. Just inside of here, you can see the frames per second is five. We'll set this to eight frames per second. That will speed it up so the animation plays faster. And we can actually play it here to see. Yeah, that probably makes more sense, eight frames per second. Here we go. There we go, that makes more sense. Now let's make our bullets collide with the walls. So inside of our bullet script right here, We'll add a ready function. Now our hitbox is an area 2D. So we can actually say hitbox, oops. Oh, we have to get access to it though. So let's drag it over. Hold control drop, hitbox dot. And we want to connect to the body entered function dot connect. Now we'll just create an inline function here. It takes a body of type node. 2D. And where am I getting that information from? Um, if you click on area 2D, go to signals right here on our hitbox. We have body entered and it a, takes a, a body of type node 2D, just like that. And then we can say Q free. This will make sure that it destroys itself when it hits the wall. The bullets will and they didn't that's okay that's simply because they're not targeting that layer we got to click on our hitbox for the bullet come over to inspector and make sure that it's targeting it's looking for the world layer as well uh, you might be like oh no our code's wrong but really we just forgot to set the layers correctly there we go and now the bullets uh, are doing that they should damage the player oh what was that? 
oh, I see what's happening. I know what's happening. So the player, if we come into the player, and then we look at the uh, collision layer for the player, it's actually on the world layer. So the bullet is colliding with the player's uh, um, body, not just their hurt box. So we wanna take the player off that layer. We want the player to target the world layer, but we'll actually put them on the player layer, which is layer two. And now our bullets should consistently hit the player and put them into the knockback state, just like that. Of course, there's a little bit of invincibility. Oh yeah, that looks good, perfect. Now the last thing I want to address is that our enemy cannons are firing at the exact same time, which feels a little bit weird. We can add some randomization to the wait time, or not the wait time, but, but when the timer actually starts. And we can do this, well, there's a few different ways we could do this, but I think the easiest way would be to turn off auto start on our timer, and then inside of our enemy cannon here, we can call the randomize function. This just randomizes the seed for the game. And it makes sure that each time we generate a random number uh, that we're, we're not going to generate the same number. And so from here, once we set that up, we're going to actually do get tree dot, we're, we're gonna call, uh, we wanna do this at the end of our ready function. So come down to the end, call randomize, and then we'll call await get tree dot create timer, and then we're gonna give it a certain amount of time, and this is where we wanna get a random number. So we'll say uh, uh, rand f range from zero to, uh, let's say, maybe two seconds, and then dot timeout. So what is this gonna do? This is going to wait on the timeout signal of this timer that we just created, which is going to run for any time between zero and two seconds randomly. Essentially, the code is going to wait for a zero to two seconds randomly before it goes on to the next line of code. So at 43, it's gonna wait. And on the next line, we're gonna do something, which is timer.start. Now, theoretically, they won't shoot at the exact same time anymore, but they will still both have a five second, they will still both have a five second cool down between hits. So there we go. That's going to be it for this lecture. In the next one, we'll look at being able to deflect the bullets back at the enemies with the player's sword. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure and like it, subscribe to the channel, and make a comment down below if you have any questions. I will see you all in the next one.